What's going on everyone? Juicebags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. As we all know, the Protean Shift expansion is almost upon us, and does release on Tuesday, June 19th, just under a week. So absolutely awesome. Now, one of the things that, in my opinion, is actually being overshadowed a little by just the massive amount of information we've received about this expansion over the last few weeks is the ability to pick your own map. Uh, I know Trendy has talked about it. They have put it in the, the dev logs and they talked about it on the dev streams. As we all know, trials are headed out and expeditions are here. And that gives us the opportunity to pick any of the map we want to do on any of the appropriate chaos tiers. I personally could not wait to hop in and check out Molten Citadel Expedition Chaos 7 mode and Trendy has given me the opportunity to give you all a little sneak peek at what's to come in the Protean Shift update. Now of course we know Professor Proteus is bringing all the mods and all the hotness and for the sake of this run we're going to be focusing on a couple of mods that were already shown in last week's dev stream. However, we're going to be able to see them in action in Chaos 7, and that is, first off, the Piercer Servo. Defense projectiles pierce shields and do 46.5% of their damage. Now, I mean, come on, who doesn't want to start slapping down all of the cannonballs all over the place? I mean, we got to have some boom boom in our life, and the Piercer Servo is something I'm going to be looking out for on day one without a doubt. Now, of course, this is going to have ranges and quality. I'm not sure what it goes up to or what it starts down at, but this particular one that I have is 46.5% of their damage is going to pierce right through those shields. Now, in addition to that, we know we've got some explosions. Now, I chose the Gobu Boom Servo, where goblins explode when killed, dealing 42% of their health as area damage. So every goblin that dies to my flame auras is gonna go boom. So for this particular build, I'm gonna focus on cannonballs and flame auras, and let's make it happen. Now, first things first, we know we do have flyers on this map, so I am gonna put two sky guards in. Uh, these Sky Guards are using uh, Chaos 7 gear, however, they are vanilla with no fancy mods on them. Uh, same thing for the walls. I'm going to go with Squire Spike Blockades. And then I'm going to reinforce those versus any ranged mobs with some Reflect Beams. Uh, same thing on the Reflect Beams. Uh, I've got nothing fancy on them. Uh, they're just Reflect Beams as I have an opportunity to check out those two mods particularly that were focused on in the trendy dev stream and I'm gonna take every opportunity I can to make those mods shine. Now let's go ahead and start off with a couple of flame auras I think. Where do we want to do it? Let's actually go like this. Let's go two flame auras on every lane. And then now that we got a little bit of AOE damage going up front, let's focus pretty heavily on the boom boom. So uh, what do I have? I've got 500, or pardon me, 340 DU left, which is what, 11 cannonballs. Let's just go three per lane. And you know what? Let's put, we're gonna have enough room for two more and you know, Never enough cannonballs in your life, there's no doubt about that. So why don't we put one behind on each of the outside lanes, and that will allow me to focus on the lane in the middle. Now I do want to focus on the lanes themselves, and I really want to check out these explosions and that shield pierce from the cannonballs. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump all of the remaining DU into these sky guards, that way I can essentially ignore the flyers. Now we also know that you can add elements to your towers. We take a look at these cannonballs. Guess what that is? That'd be a little water damage. So we do have, once again, Professor Proteus bringing the hotness and giving us the opportunity to throw on the water servo, 
which is it attunes a non-elemental tower to water damage and increases the defense power by 2940. So not only is it getting some love in the form of water damage, it's increasing that defense power. Oh, yes. Now, just because I'm not really familiar with exactly what's going to happen here, I am bringing my trusty Nuke Monk in as, you know, that is one of my DPS heroes of choice. So I figured I'd better stick to that. And let's get this bad boy rolling. I am excited to see Boom Boom in all fashions coming from these cannons and watching these little Gobus all blow up. Now, of course, the goblins are going to have to die up. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, we got explosions going off now. The goblins are going to have to die to those flame ours to blow up. And I'm hoping these cannons, although they are just wrecking house, I'm hoping they don't clear everything out too fast. This map does have a ton of mobs, so there's no doubt in my mind we are going to see lots and lots of explosions. You see them going off right there. Very, very nice. Now, I chose the goblins, actually just hoping to see more explosions, as this map does have lots of mobs, and I'm not getting disappointed, as there is, without a doubt, explosions going crazy all over the place. Now, I know that it was mentioned right away, right after the dev stream, that some folks were concerned about their frame rate uh, dropping with all of these new effects and these explosions. So I do have my frame counter going uh, just to watch. Um, I'm bouncing between like 130 frames per second and then dropping down to as far as about 110. Looks like 108, 110 is the minimum it's going to. So I am getting a small frame drop when the explosions are going off, but just not very heavily. So no massive frame drop. Uh, it appears like these visualizations will not uh, catch your machine on fire like a lot of people were afraid that they might. Little stuck Lady Orc there, and then we got the flyers rolling in. It looks like these vanilla sky guards are actually doing really good, so I'm just going to leave them alone. Of course, they did get the upgrades really quick. And here we go, a couple of uh, flame aura upgrades. Very, very nice. I do want to focus on the cannons, though. So after this one round of flame aura upgrades, I think I'm going to put everything else directly into all the cannons. Now, let's see. This is our boss lane over here. So let's focus on this area and make sure these cannons are upgraded. That way we're able to just burn that boss down. In fact, let's go ahead and go one more up on each of the boss lane cannons. Now, do we have any geodes yet? We do have uh, some shieldies right there. We see uh, well, only 12 of them, but the shield penetration will benefit to those two. Oh, we got vanguards over here too. So yeah, we've got lots of shieldies. No geodes quite yet. Um, however, I'm sure we will see some geodes before the end of the map and we get to see exactly what these cannons are gonna do to them. No doubt. Now, oh my gosh, man. These things are just really punching some orcs in the face. There is no doubt about it. The the Gobu Legion has no chance with all of these mods getting added onto our gear. That is for certain. You see the explosions going off there? They're actually going off quite readily. Of course, we've got lots of little goblins rolling in. So every one of them that dies to a flame aura is blowing up for that area damage around them. Now, of course, like my philosophy here was to have a large pack of goblins and hopefully lots of little explosions going off. Although a goblin's health, of course, is going to be much lower than, say, an orc's health. I'm looking for sheer numbers altogether. And let's get this guy burned up. Oh, yeah. I did take a big shot there. Get a little healed up here. And this should be able to clear out the rest of the wave. The explosions are going crazy. I'm excited to see what kind of combinations we can get. Now, besides, you know, of course we know about the pierce. We know about the explosions. Now, this alone is a small, small cut of the 120 plus mods that are coming in the Protean Shift update. So there is going to be just unlimited possibilities. And I'm really, really stoked 
to see exactly what all the community can come up with. You want to build a crit build, build a crit build. If you want to build a defense power or a hero damage build, then build those. If you want to go straight ability power, go ham. The sky's the limit, and I think we're going to have lots and lots of opportunities to play exactly with what our favorite defenses are. So whatever defense you want to use, there's really no reason you shouldn't be able to put together something amazing for that defense. Still no geode yet? It's wave three now. We should have a geode here. There's one. There's two, actually. We got any more over here? We got two bosses coming. No, all right, so we got two geodes in the middle lane. Let's see exactly what these cannons can do here. Just gonna try to keep these lady orcs off the walls here. That way I can really check out the cannonball boom boom going in those geodes. In fact, I was tempted. I should have just moved the flame ours back up out of the way. That way the flame ours can't steal any geode kills from those cannons. Come on out, little geodes. I want to see what you got here. It's a bit of a heavy lane this time. I guess that's where the mixtures will come in. Uh, we know that there's war bore explosions. Uh, we know that there's goblins ex goblin explosions. I'm not really sure. Oh, here come the geodes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that cannon annihilated that geode. Let's see. Oh, look at him. Oh, my gosh. That is a thing of beauty. Seeing a cannon crush a geode like that is something we've really needed in the game for quite a while. That almost went really, really bad. <laughs> uh, once again, thank you very much to Trendy for giving me the opportunity to pop in and give you all this sneak peek as... I mean... The second that I heard I might get the opportunity to do so, I've been absolutely chomping at the bit. I've got to do me some Molten Citadel Chaos 7, as this is indeed one of my favorite maps. I was really a huge fan of Magus Quarters back in the day, and Magus Quarters, of course, in DD1 was my very first absolute favorite grind map, and that just makes Molten Citadel even nearer and dearer to the heart. And so stoked that this is my very first Chaos 7 Expedition in Molten Citadel here. Oh yes. Just wrecking it. Now we all know what cannonballs do. Cannons destroy things. They tear stuff up and it's just some absolutely massive single target damage. Now combining in that shield pierce, oh my gosh. Now I'm excited to see, I didn't have a heavy cannonball shard to use. So I couldn't throw heavy cannonballs on, but I am super stoked to see what heavy cannonball plus shield pierce is going to do to these cannons. There's no doubt in my mind that it's it's not going to be just an absolute thing of beauty. Getting it done over here. We got a lot of little goblins. Oh yeah, they're blowing up. Oh, they took that war bore out too. Pack of Goblin Explosions equal Dead Warbore. Did you see that pack right there drop? That was from all those little goblins that were in the mix blowing up. And here we go, another Geode. You see, it's getting hammered by those cannons. Geode down, and it's fair game on all of these Berserker Lady Orcs to just get wrecked. Another concern a lot of people had was uh, with Hero Health. And as you see here, 271,000 hero health, it's right about what I've been running on the live game currently, and I do not have hero health stacked right now. So I don't know what limits you could get up to, as I did have a pre-made set of gear to use. So I'm not really sure what type of hero health you can get up to. However, I did see an image that Lalta posted up on Discord earlier with a Barbarian with over a million HP. So Hero Health is not going to be an issue even though the stats are not going to be as abundant on a piece of gear as far as the standard rolls. Now of course we do know we can add stats to a piece of gear. I talked a little bit that, about that in my last video 
and it was shown a bit in the dev stream last week. All right, and wave five is all that's left. What do we got? We've got a skelly. Skelly and an ogre. Let's see how these guys fare against not fully upgraded, but dang near upgraded cannons. Just looking back over here and seeing all these cannons wrecking it. That's what I've been wanting to see for a very, very long time when I turn around and I look at Molten Citadel. There's no doubt about it. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. The main thing is I'm just so glad that we're going to be able to use whatever we want. You know, the meta builds, of course, are going to thin out a bit. Now I'm sure there will be some go-to builds that the community puts together. However, you're not going to be stuck using this one thing with no other options. There we see some more cannon pierce. That geode? Oh, it doesn't matter. The cannons don't care. Not in the slightest. That is just beautiful. That ogre dropped so darn fast, I didn't even really get to get over here to see exactly how he went. But once again, I mean, we know what cannons do. Cannons blow things up. There's no doubt about it. They smash. Just smash faces. And now being able to use them wherever we want is just going to be so dang nice. Need this assassin to get off me. Thank you very much. Nuke Monk for the win. Oh, yeah. Now we've got the tough decision, of course, on what are you going to play on update day, as we're going to want to check out everything. Uh, however, you know, obviously we're going to have to put our sets of gear together. But I'm definitely, I'm definitely thinking the Nuke Monk, or of course an EV2, you know, I love me some EV2. Or maybe the Gun Witch could be on my agenda for DPS heroes on patch day one plaguing hawk left and oh as you just see the numbers drop does not stand a chance at all another flyer rolling up and there we go so once again thank you very much uh, trendy uh, Lalta I do appreciate it a ton getting the opportunity to come in and give you all a sneak peek and have the chance of course we all know I love this game. Having the chance to pop in and check it out is just huge, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you once again. Um, as I mentioned earlier, tune in Friday, 12 noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, for the final trendy dev stream prior to the launch of the Protean Shift expansion. So thank you once again, and I will see you next time. Take it easy. Thank you.